you have the chance to attend the simulation, do it. For myself, for the, the co-workers who attended it, it was life-changing. I really haven't stopped thinking about the experience, and I've talked to anybody that would listen to me talk about it. It was that impactful for me on a personal level. So what is the Cost of Poverty experience? It's a two-hour training that allows participants to walk the mile in the shoes of under-resourced families, actual families that have lived here in the greater Dayton area for many years. These are families that we've been able to get to know over the last seven years through several of the projects that Think Tanks runs. So if you don't have a first-hand account of what poverty is, or you don't have low-income, under-resourced families in your social network, this may be a good way to really understand or have a better understanding of what poverty is doing right here in the Dayton community. I came with two other members from the Red Cross staff here, and um, my understanding was there would be a simulation of what it would feel like to be in poverty, and that's absolutely what we experienced. So what I was expecting was to understand, um, one, I was interested to see how a simulation would work because we've tried to do some events like that for some of our sponsors at the Red Cross. And so I was looking from some, for some lessons learned to see um, how to reach the heartstrings of people that you're trying to, to reach. Uh, I'm not sure if I had any like expectations uh, walking, uh, walking into that. And really, it was just kind of um, open to uh, to new ideas around what that was even about, uh, and that was I was grateful for. Training. I uh, have been teaching social justice for approximately about 15 years, and we've done domestic poverty a number of times. And it's really hard for the students to grasp what domestic poverty is. And I've experienced it, um, and so I was very excited about the training because I wanted to, without having to go into a neighborhood and talking to the people, I wanted to have a simulation experience that I thought we could bring back to our students, to be honest. I was thinking ahead and saying, if this is really great, how can we bring this training back to share with our students? Um, I feel very knowledgeable about kind of what the situation of poverty is and having experienced it both, you know, walking with people doing it and also reading about it, learning about it, and I wanted my students to be able to get that. So I was looking at it from a how do we bring this to our school perspective. So we were kind of thrown into this experience of you are now a family and these are the goals and the objectives that we want you to try to accomplish over the next um, four weeks which correlated into 12 minute um, segments so you know my first experience is that uh, I didn't have uh, any time to take care of my daughter so she went to school like she was supposed to but uh, I didn't pick her up um, I was um, found guilty of uh, child neglect. Uh, my wife and I made decisions around who was going to get the car, who wasn't going to get the car, um, what responsibilities had to be done during the day, and um, my first blush was, this won't be that difficult, you know, I can figure things out, I'm quick, uh, and it was really uh, frustrating because of the things that we were asked to accomplish, and I think there were ten, uh, I think we accomplished um, maybe four. Uh, at best. I think the most surprising thing for me in the simulation was how quickly my own behaviors and my own thought processes changed. Um, I saw how when you're desperate you would do things that um, you might not be able to explain otherwise. Um, I saw myself fighting for things and stretching the truth and um, being something that was distant from my own moral compass in order to navigate my way through the realities of the poverty system. Um, so I think the one thing I would tell people is that you might be surprised what you learn and you might be surprised what you learn about yourself and how you may act and react if you were put in a similar situation. Versus you think you know what's going on out there. You think you know the struggles that are being encountered and yet you become part of that for simply two hours and you're like, I, I've had no idea. You know, I think that probably one of the aha moments for me was the navigation through it. I mean, to have the group of professionals that were as part of that training together 
to have that group come together with skill sets and, and such, and yet we became extremely frustrated, if not, you know, uh, physically <laughs> agitated, you know, to a place of we can't get through this system. You know, I think for me, um, my simulation was a father with two daughters. And while I was very proud to have uh, finally accumulated the money for my rent, when I came back to my, my house, I had been evicted. So you're just like, what do we do? And then I realized I haven't fed my girls for a month. So it was, I mean, just that sheer navigation. I think the other to the other for me, certainly as far as the aha was, oh my gosh, these people are so being exploited. I mean, there was just, it just seems like out of nowhere, people would come in, hey, I'll buy your food stamps, or I can speak to my personal experience. I was cashing my unemployment check, and he said, it'll be $75, which was 10% of my check. And by that time, you're just like, just cash it. You know, I'm done, just cash it, because there's no other way out. Um, since attending the training, we've offered the Cost of Poverty Experience Simulation at Sinclair numerous times. Um, uh, I have encouraged people in higher education to, to do the training, to go through the experience so that they can better understand uh, where do we fit in this conversation, um, what kind of barriers or roadblocks do we as an institution or we as, a, as in higher education how do we impact this? What can we do to, to decrease some of the barriers and, and positively impact some of the challenges to help people um, meet their goals? I really think that, especially at Chaminade Julian, we serve a wide variety of, of students from the richest to the poorest and those from both sides of the tracks. And I think that if I were to encourage one of my colleagues for here to go, I would say you need to go to understand what some of our students are going through. Go with an open mind. Um, and just kind of take in the experience and really try to put all your, your whole self into it and be really open and, and engage. And my hope would be that they would come out with a better understanding of what some of our students go through and then be able to kind of understand what some of the larger Dayton community deals with so we can not only be an educational resource, a support resource for our students, but also how we can help transform the community. No, I mean, I think, I think that what the work that Think Tank's doing and all, all, um, lots of nonprofit partners are really important because as we see the cuts that have happened uh, uh, to, the, to the safety net and to the um, extremely poor, uh, we have, especially at this time of year and other times, you know, we have to really think about what kind of uh, a society we want to live in. And so I think that that's really the, the point of Think Tank is really challenging uh, what we think are norms to really d define what, what we want for our fellow human being and what we want for our fellow citizen and our fellow neighbor and our fellow uh, community members. So I think that's why I think tank's so important and, and the role that they do to really encourage uh, uh, middle class people to get involved in this super important issue for the future of our community. And I think one of the things I like about think tank and the, just that whole process is, you know, part of your job is to help people understand what they don't like. And when they're done, they don't have to like it. They just have to understand it. Uh, and I think that's where resolution um, really starts to gain, gain traction. Uh, and I was even reading a lot about Mandela, and it says really, you know, the character of a country is uh, kind of signified by the way we treat its uh, children. Uh, and um, if we're really called to be great leaders and to rise this community, um, it isn't just about a product or a service. It's about how do we take the community, take care of the community as a whole. And that would be including um, understanding those people that um, are as fortunate and how do we give them the gift of encouragement, uh, how do we give them the resources to survive, and um, the knowledge and education to, uh, to lift up. I think that is the best thing I could say about, about uh, Think Tank, really forces us to really think outside the box, and so that's, that's the best way to start thinking. So I appreciate everything I've learned from them. Um, I appreciate being a part of something much bigger uh, that is so community connected, and so I think everybody should really have enough, should take advantage of any opportunity you have to do this. I'd like to say a special thank you to the CareSource Foundation. 
and Kathy Ponens. They've been partners of ours for the last four years to bring this training tool not only to the organizations here in the greater Dayton area, but to organizations all across the, the country. Without their support, without their encouragement, and without them helping us to craft this vision, the training wouldn't have been possible. So thank you to Kathy and to the Foundation Board for all of your support over the past year.